So now that we have the airbag out, what I'm going to do is start to take the stereo system out. Um, there's two screws down at the bottom here, and then I believe there's one or two screws on the side. Now what I've already done, I forgot to turn the camera on for this, but there's a uh, plastic cover here. The top pops down, and this slides off, and then there's a metal plate underneath. Now I don't know if you need to actually take this off. I took it off because I'm going to be taking off the dash anyway. Uh, and I figured it'd be easier to show you where the screw is uh, if I took that off. Now, someone has already taken the screw out, it looks like, uh, but I'll show you where the screw would normally go. All right, so if you look right there, that is where the screw would normally go, and it appears someone has already taking it out for us so let me see if I can go ahead and pull the stereo out if I can't then I'm gonna check the other side to see if there's a screw there as well nope. so it's just the two screws on the bottom and then that screw on the side like I said I got lucky someone already took it out all right, so that's stereo and AC controls out. Now we're gonna move on to the dash. So the yellow cable indicates an airbag or safety restraint system. So um, your automatic like retracting seat belts and everything like that uh, will be labeled yellow. So we just need to disconnect this. So that did it. Uh, so step one down. Let's get to the rest of this dash. All right, so to remove the gauge cluster, once you have the steering column down, uh, there's just two Phillips head screws, or uh, it looks like there's an eight millimeter head on there as well. Uh, just take those out and pop the whole cluster forward. My camera's memory card filled up, so I'm just gonna finish this really quick um, on my phone. I'm running out of daylight again. So anyway, I think that the last bolts that we have to take off are down here. There's this bracket here, and there may be one additional bolt somewhere around here, uh, according to the diagrams that I can find online. So I'm going to go ahead and take these off, and then we'll see if, if the dash comes off. I gave up trying to remove the entire dash with the uh, support beam, the crash bar, and the heater core and everything uh, together. And uh, just ended up removing tons of these screws that went in here, here, over here, down to the side here, and over here, and basically all over the entire dash, pulled out all of these screws, and now it is uh, just popping right off. But 
Um, I'm going to have to take this off and unhook whatever wiring harness is still connected to this. And then that should allow us to get to um, the bar underneath it. And I may not even need to pull that off. I mean, I'm not really planning on doing firewall modifications unless I absolutely have to uh, with the motor swap. But as of right now, the only reason for pulling this off is so that we can get the entire wiring harness out and strip it down to just what we need, only the modules that we need. But anyway, that's the way I ended up taking it out if you're trying to remove the dash yourself. Um, right now I'm just doing it with the screws and taking the dash off and leaving the support bar and then we'll take a look underneath that all right so another day's passed I finally have some sunlight again uh, so what we're gonna do is just finish up tearing out this interior um, all I've got left are the plastic pieces and this uh, V brace on the chassis we've got the headliner and then um, the rear uh, side panels plastic panels and then the carpeting of course we'll still have all the sound deadening and everything below that and we'll take care of that in another episode um, I'll have to do that probably uh, this weekend but we're gonna go ahead and start tearing down the interior oh, not start tearing down finish tearing down the interior Well, that's the rear taken care of and I've got all the parts that I've taken off just in case anybody needs the stuff I'll throw it up on an RX-8 forum or something or message me or put a comment down below and let me know if there's anything in this car that you need that I may be taking off um, anything that really makes it a, a street car so interior uh, any trunk pieces some of the exterior headliner, airbags, radio, uh, console, carpet, any of that stuff, I'll, I'll give it away pretty cheap. So just let me know. Now it's on to the headliner. So as you could tell, I struggled for a minute to figure out exactly how Mazda had this uh, headliner up on the vehicle. Um, last little bit after pulling that light out. Sometimes manufacturers use the center dome lights and these um, front dome lights and stuff like that to hold it up to the ceiling. Um, this one actually had a little bit of a clip that was glued to this uh, headliner and it just has to be lifted up off of a little um, ledge here, lifted up and, and pulled back. And then you can actually uh, remove it like that. I instead just ripped it straight down, <laughs> but it's off.
All right, so now we're at the point where we just need to clean up all the little bits um, so that we can get all of the uh, sound deadening material and heat insulation and everything uh, cleaned up and then use the dry ice to break it apart. So I'm gonna just go in here and take off the last little bit of the, um, the insulation that's attached to the bottom of the carpet. Some of it stuck and stayed underneath. So I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit and then take off these plastic ducts that send the air conditioning and the heat uh, to the rear passengers. And, and then it's on to taking out the sound deadening material. The wiring harness, um, I'm gonna leave it be for right now. Obviously, we don't need uh, the stuff that I've mentioned before, which is the airbags, the stereo, um, any of the sensors or buttons and stuff for, uh, for things that we're not going to use. I'm going to pull all those out, uh, but I won't be doing that until we have the new engine, the new ECU, and uh, the new wiring harness so that I know what I need from each to be able to control uh, the engine but also have ABS, have my taillights, my headlights, um, and then uh, all of the engine controls, and then possibly the gauge cluster. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that. Uh, but that concludes it for the interior so far. Next episode, what we're going to do is, uh, like I said, take out the sound deadening, most likely, or we may jump to uh, working on the engine and pulling the old stuff out of that. Uh, but You'll see in the next episode. If you like this video, uh, please like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. We're gonna be tearing this thing down from a street car into a car that we can use on the track. Um, getting rid of the, the old rotary engine that doesn't work properly and putting in a different, more powerful engine. Uh, right now the game plan is to put a V6 in. So uh, we'll see, that may change depending upon availability. Um, and, and what direction we go with this. But uh, we're gonna set this up for autocross and then uh, road course. I live near uh, Road Atlanta, as well as Atlanta Motorsports Park and, um, and Barber Motorsports and all that stuff. So those are the tracks I'm most likely gonna be taking this car to uh, most often. So stay tuned and uh, in the next episode, we'll keep moving on this project. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.